Hey, what's up? This is Joe with Joe and Tell. And today we're going to be taking a look at cables. These are the speaker wires from NB speaker cables from Australia. And they've included this special oil that's included with this. So at first I didn't believe that cables could make a difference, but then I put some of this on there and I was just blown away. Like the sound after I put some of this on there, it was just, it was like on a whole different level. The bass increase, it was just more full. The sound was warmer and overall the sound stage sounded more realistic. I could place things. Um, yeah, you guys have to really check this stuff out. Of course I'm kidding. These guys are awesome that they sent this with, with this. This is just water. They believe as I do that a lot of the other stuff out there is not really what they say it is. They're making claims that are probably hard to back up and I, and I agree with them. And I think that it's cool that they're coming out with speaker cables. They're just basic speaker cables that are nice looking, thick gauge, all the things that I believe matter, fit and finish, things like that. So I have people who ask me whether I believe in cables or not. And um, I always thought that that was kind of a weird question to have is like, do you believe in cables? It's like asking if I believe in tweeters. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, what is that supposed to mean? Does that mean, do I believe in tweeters in general? The question has to be asked in regards to uh, your expectations. So do tweeters produce frequencies above five kilohertz better than woofers do? Then I would say, yes, I do believe in tweeters and I do believe that they do that specific job better than a woofer. When you ask the same question when it comes to cables, you have to give it some parameters, right? So you have to ask me whether I believe that cables are going to give you better sound quality. You know, that would be one parameter. Or you can ask whether I think cables do a good job of making contact between the speakers themselves and the receiver. If you look at it that way, I can gauge whether it's doing a good job or whether it's not making connection, in which case it's not doing its job, right? So I think that's important to look at certain parameters, look at it more from a scientific perspective. And I know there's a lot of people that are debating whether it's worth it to spend money on cables or not. Yeah, like I know before I've kind of made fun of high-end cables. For me, I've always called RCA cables, RCA cables, and not interconnects. These are not just cables. These are interconnects. I spent hundreds of dollars on these. These are not RCA cables. Believing in something, whether I believe in cables is also weird. I'm a blind believer in cables. They make a difference no matter what. That requires faith and you're not gonna change my mind. There's no way to prove or disprove. So it's kind of an endless argument. It's not worth it to have that argument. That's what I wanna do today is kind of go more in depth about that. I wanna talk about maybe ways to measure or setting some parameters and some definitions as to you know, what we expect these cables to do and whether they do a good job of that or not. Also, whether some cables do a better job than others. I'm more a fan of the scientific approach where you're supposed to be able to measure a difference, right? So you have a hypothesis, it's supposed to do this, and then you do the test and either it fulfills that hypothesis or, or not. It's kind of more my style to do it that way. But I also do understand about experience, right? So the experience of having nice cables and plugging them in and how they look, that can affect us greatly. For example, I'm in the cars. Whenever I wash my car, for some reason, my car feels smoother. It feels faster. You know, of course it's not, right? Maybe it is, maybe less wind, wind, aero, aerodynamics. I don't know, but you get my point. Sometimes just the way it looks and the feel and the fact that I spent an hour cleaning my car, I'm invested into it, right? So I kind of feel like it should perform better, even though it probably doesn't. That's an effect that none of us are impervious to. And it's something to keep in mind when you're purchasing anything. It doesn't even have to be audio related, anything. I remember when I was a kid, it was all about having like Jordans, right? And it said like Air Jordans and they had the cushion on the bottom. It's like somebody asking me, do you believe in shoes? Do I believe in shoes? Uh, yes, I, I believe in shoes and I believe in clothes and, you know, they have a purpose of keeping my keeping my feet uh, from getting dirty and keeping me from stepping on like sharp objects and, you know, if the ground's hot, stuff like that. But their claim was that it would make you perform better, right? Their claim was that it would make me jump higher. And that's when it starts getting tricky because does it really, you know? So that's when my belief starts to kind of fade with shoes as well as 
with cables. I don't know that I believe that certain cables are gonna make my system sound better. Do I believe that certain cables are more conductive? Yeah, I think that's that's pretty common knowledge. Like if you go to hook up a car stereo, you know, depending on the power of the app, you need a certain gauge because you need more electrons flowing. So you need thicker wire. And if you don't, then either the wires can catch on fire because there's too much electricity trying trying to flow through them. That's common knowledge that, you know, the more power that's going through and the more that you need to conduct, the thicker the wire, the more copper, the more conductive the material, all that stuff is going to be beneficial. Now, if we're talking about speakers, um, you know, you may have some speakers that are, are receiving 150, 200 watts. So that's a significant amount of power, in which case I do believe that in that case, you should have some thicker cables. I think thicker cables do make a difference. Now, whether it's gold, I, I'm not so much for me. I think a thicker gauge when you're doing longer runs is important. The insulation, so if you're running some of this next to some power cable, it's better to have some cables that do have more insulation. And I'm coming kind of from uh, more of a car audio background is what I started with. And I remember if I would hook up some RCA cables, some really long RCA cables that were not shielded very well, then I could get some interference. Yeah, there there are things that can happen where uh, there's some inductance or there's some shielding issues. So those are things that I do believe in. Where it starts getting really, really tricky is how thick the gauge has to be. So in my opinion, the longer the run, meaning the more cable that you're using, the thicker the gauge should be. If you look at a crossover network, you'll see like a, a coil in there, which is just a bunch of copper. There's a bunch of windings. And if you were to stretch it out, it'd probably be like, I don't know how many feet, I'm just guessing, but 50 feet of copper, I don't know. So when you wrap it up into a coil, right? If you wrap it up, then it becomes an inductor. Now, if you were to just keep it straight and run some electricity through it, I'm pretty sure that you would notice it becomes a resistor. There's less voltage coming out the other end compared to what's going in because some of it's being lost on its way to the, the end point because of how long the cable is. To combat that, what you probably want is some thicker wire. I have a few different cables here. Where is this? This is from Australia. This company is NB Speaker Cables, and these are really nice cables. They sent me these. They have banana plugs. These are called the superheroes because they're red and blue. Very cool. And they also have some that are called the villains, and these are green and black. And very cool. They're banana plugs, and they have this tech flex around it, so it feels really nice and it looks really cool. Uh, I did a video about DIY cables, and I talked about how these are actually my DIY cables right here. How important it was to have banana plugs. Plugging in banana plugs compared to like having to use those screw on terminals for, for raw wire. It's just so much better to have banana plugs. I'm adamant about that. I, I would recommend that everybody get at least wires that have banana plugs on them. These are some wires sent to me from Mica, and these are inexpensive. These are 14 gauge. Oh yeah, by the way, these NB speaker cables, these are beasts. These are 11 gauge, yeah, 11 gauge. The one that I made is from uh, Mono Price, and these were using uh, 12 gauge, yeah, CL2. If you see like ratings that say CL2 and things like that, those I believe are ratings re regarding if they can catch on fire, things like that. Because a lot of times people are running these through the walls and they wanna make sure that it's not gonna catch on fire. So you may see something that says CL2, things like that. Another thing that you wanna look out for when it comes to wire is that it's all copper. It, it might say oxygen free copper, certain percentage because there are some where they use different metal and then it is surrounded by copper. So it looks like copper, but the inside is actually not. And those are less conductive. Different metals have different conductivity. Don't quote me on this, but I believe silver is on the top followed by, I don't know. I think it's like silver, copper, gold. All those are at the very top. And then aluminum is lower down in that list. So if you were to get a 50 foot spool of copper versus a 50 foot spool of aluminum and you were to test that same test that I was saying earlier where you connect a multimeter on one end and let's say a battery on one end, copper is gonna lose less energy at the end versus the aluminum at the very end of that spool, you'll notice there's a higher voltage drop, all right? More resistance. And so that's just a property of the metal. So that's something to look out for. Make sure that you do get something 
that is all copper. I think the only thing better is silver. But if you get all silver, that's going to be a lot of money, right? All silver, one of these. If you have a $100,000 system, then yeah, go for it, I guess, right? But I don't have a $100,000 system, so I'm, I'm fine with copper. So these are the ones that are sent to me by Micah. And these are really cool also. They just have a nice finish. They look kind of flat when you look at them from the side. And they have banana terminals on the end. So perfect. These are four meters and they come in a pair. They also send me some that were two meters, but I'm already using those. Thank you, Micah. Those are cool. If I were to compare these, the NB speaker cables, these are a step above. Here's kind of what you get when you buy speakers. You might get some wire that looks like this. And what is this probably? If I look at the ends of these, these are probably 16, 18 gauge. I don't know. It's pretty thin though, right? You wouldn't want to use these in long runs of 20 feet or more. Two or three feet, yeah, maybe that's fine. Look at this also. So you have to use the screw terminals on this because it doesn't have banana plugs on the ends. Here's some more raw speaker cables. I don't know where I got this from. This is really old. Not very attractive either. Compare that with something like this, which looks cooler, right? And I think that's another factor is how it looks, right? Like I said earlier, we're affected by how a product looks. My car feels faster when it's clean. When I plug in these speaker cables to my system and it looks cool and I don't have to hide them because they look so awesome, it makes me feel better. It makes me feel like the sound is better. And what's wrong with that, right? It's not about believing versus, you know, whether something's true or not. To me, it's more about the experience, right? So if I say, hey, I have a better experience when I plug these in, you can't really argue with that, right? There's no arguing what, what I feel. So if I like it, I like the way they look, they make me feel better. I feel like my system deserves it, then that's good, right? Now, if I were to tell somebody like, this will make your system sound better, now that's when it starts getting tricky, right? Because I don't know that you can measure a difference. Perhaps you can. I've seen cables out there that are way more expensive in the hundreds and the thousands of dollars. Call me skeptical when it comes to that. Maybe they make a difference. I don't know if it's measurable or not. I think I understand enough about how electricity works to kind of come to a conclusion without testing it. It might be made out of some special material, better copper, whatever it may be. Yeah, that's all fine and good. Like my example with the shoes, right? It's like saying that uh, shoelaces are going to make a difference. It's not even, this is, I don't even equate these to shoes. It's kind of like asking, do you believe in shoelaces? Like shoelaces are going to make you perform better. I would probably come to the conclusion that if somebody told me that, that shoelaces don't make a difference, right? That's probably my conclusion. But somebody might come back and say, well, you haven't tried shoelaces that are made out of diamonds, though. If you try the ones that are made out of diamonds, it's like totally game changing. <laughs> and if I did, if I, if I wore some million dollar laces on my shoes, would it make me perform better? Would I run faster? I don't know, but I feel pretty awesome. So I kind of equate it to that. I do know that some of these other cables do have different types of like electronics built into them that are supposed to help it. But to me, those are passive electronics, right? They're not powered. There's, there's no power going into them. Even if they did change the sound, I don't know that I would want that, right? Because I'm not in control of the, the sound change that it makes. I don't even know how it's affecting it. If I plug in a graphic equalizer in line, then I know what changes it's making. So if I boost the bass, I know that it, that's what's happening. If I boost the treble, I know exactly what's happening. But if the cable starts changing the sound, what sound changes is it making? And is it for the better? Is it something that I like or don't like? So that's kind of tricky to me because a lot of audiophiles would be totally against putting a graphic equalizer in line because they would say that that is another device that you're putting in the signal path that's gonna degrade the, the sound and you shouldn't change the sound like that. But a lot of audio files wouldn't be against me changing my cables if those did change my sound. So kind of don't get that. At least with the other one, I know how it's changing the sound, right? I guess I would like to wrap this up and just basically say that I think what's important is think about the hierarchy of what's important to you. Think about how much you've spent on your speakers. Think about how much you've spent on an amplifier and the source. Consider how much difference would changing out your speakers be compared to spending thousands on cables. Which one do you think is going to make more of a difference? I know which one I think would make more of a difference, the speakers. And then followed by maybe changing out your amplifier. If you don't have a powerful amplifier and you want to be able to turn it up more, 
I wouldn't go for buying uh, cables next. I would go for changing out the amplifier. So think about that hierarchy. To me, cables would be a little bit lower on that list unless you're using some really chintzy thin cable and putting a lot of power through the speakers. And if you have some low resistance speakers that require higher current, like these ELACs uh, are four ohms, so they like a lot of power, then yeah, I probably wouldn't use this, this type of cable. I'd use something more like this that can handle that amount of current. Yeah, just consider the hierarchy. Now, like I said, if your system is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, then it kind of makes sense to spend a lot of money on wires. Why? Because why not? That's why. You know, you spend hundreds of thousands on your system. Are you going to buy some micro cables that are 30 bucks? Probably not. Uh, you're probably going to spend more than that. You might spend hundreds. You might spend thousands. Who knows? Are they going to perform better? Probably not. Not. A, <laughs> I wouldn't think so. But... Does it match? Yeah. Does it look better? Probably. Does it feel cooler to, to plug them in? Probably. Are you going to raise them off the ground because they're so expensive you don't even want them touching the ground? Probably. But yeah, let's be honest. Let's call it what it is. At a certain point, audio becomes more of a luxury. I think we should treat it as such. Say it is what it is. It becomes a, a point where I'm showing off to my other rich friends like, hey, uh, my system is very expensive. Your system is really expensive. But you got some some wires that only cost a couple hundred. My wires are thousands. So you need to get up on me. Anyway, I think that's what it is. Tell me if I'm wrong. You know, I may have an experience where I do realize like, hey, these other cables are doing something that you didn't even understand. There might be something I don't know about. And uh, I like to keep an open mind to that. But let me know what you guys think. I know this is a hot topic out there. And I just wanted to kind of like touch base and give my opinion on it. I'm not hating on people who are into, uh, you know, expensive wires. I do think it's kind of funny. To each his own, right? That's what they say. Each his own. And so, for me, I'm going to stick to these companies who make these cables that are not overly expensive, that can uh, make fun of themselves once in a while. NB speaker cables, mica, some DIY projects like the one that I did. Yeah, that's, that's my style. Uh, what's yours? Anyway... I hope you enjoy this. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to listen to my podcast, it's at patreon.com forward slash Joe and Tell. I'll leave a link here. And uh, yeah, that's it. Make sure to ring the bell to be notified when I upload. That's it. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.